that this will happen to them. I don't know where some have gotten their information, how much assurance they have that they never think about it at all. We all, majority if not all of us, we all are sure that it will not happen to us at all. We are completely different than other people. Due to our generation, due to our era, due to the amount of information that we have, we don't even give 1% chance and probability that this can happen to us. But when we look at the verses of the Holy Quran and the Hadith of Ahl al-Bayt we see otherwise. Nobody is immune from it. But the problem is, we don't read the Quran typically with this mindset to see is it possible or not. We don't. What are you talking about, Sheikh? What is it going to happen to us or not? It's completely keeping you keeping us in the dark. Wait. We'll get to that tomorrow night. But let's ask another question. I just received this question about two weeks ago from a sister in another state. Is it possible that more than 120,000 people pledging allegiance to Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, and only 70 days, only 70 days after the martyrdom of Rasulullah, 
happened, they forgot the Hadith. Is it possible? It happened. We look at the history and we move, as we say in Arabic, Marar al Karam, generous, we move past by the history. When I was approached by that question, is it possible that 70 days after Ghadir, people forget that they pledge allegiance with Amir al muminin Well, they did. Is it possible? Well, they did. We go beyond this point. This is not a topic of our lecture. Tomorrow night, I will let you know it's a topic. I want you to follow me. Is it possible for people only 10 days extra that Prophet Musa left them with Harun, they all became a disbeliever. Is it possible? What happened? We're talking about 70 days? That's too long. 10 days. Allah told Prophet Musa, come to me 30 days. We added 10 more nights. That's it. People completely disbelieved. But we don't take a lesson. Typically, we don't take admonition. Action plan starting tonight. We will put a lens on our eyes and reading Quran with this mindset that I want to see what happened to those people and making sure it won't happen to me. Possibility happens. Is it possible? that only 50 years after the martyrdom of Rasulullah, more than 30,000 people gather to massacre the grandson of the Prophet. Is it possible? Yes, it's possible. It happened. Chapter 22, verse 46. أَفَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْعَرْضِ فَتَكُونُ لَهُمْ فَتَكُونَ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ يَعْقِلُونَ بِهَا أَوْ آذَانٌ يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارِ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ Have they not traveled over the land so they may have hearts by which they may apply reason or ears by which they may hear? Indeed, it is not the eyes that turn blind, but the hearts turn blind, those that are in the chest. Our qulu becomes blind. We read Quran, we move on. That's not happening to us. I'm not taking lesson from the Quran from the people before me. What happened to them? I don't do it. Another verse. Chapter 30, verse 9. أَوَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْعَرْضِ فَيَنْظُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ كَانُوا أَشَدَّ مِنْهُمْ قُوَّةً وَآثَرُوا الْعَرْضِ وَعَمَّرُوهَا وَعَمَرُوهَا أَكْثَرَ مِمَّا عَمَرُوهَا وَجَاءَتْهُمْ رُسُلُهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ فَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيَظْلِمَهُمْ وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ Brothers and sisters, Quran is there for us to read and ponder. Have they not traveled in the land? So that they may observe how was the fate of those who were before them. We read Quran, yes or no? Yes. Alhamdulillah. Some say yes, some they're quiet. Alhamdulillah, that shows. Do we read Quran more often? Yes. Insha'Allah we will read more often. Let's say inshallah. Inshallah. So when I get to this verse, chapter 30, verse 9, أَوَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْعَرْضِ فَيَنْظُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ Don't they travel in the land so they may observe how was the fate of those who were before them? What made 120,000 people leave Ghadir and Amir al -Mumin? What made the whole nation of Prophet Musa leave? What made 30,000 people come and confront Abu Abdullah al Hussein? What made people leave Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib? What made people leave Imam Hassan al Mushtaba Ali? 
What made, what made, what made? Allah says again, have they not traveled in, la in the land so they may observe how was the fate of those who were before them? They were more powerful than them. When we hear about the past, our grandparents, 100 years, 120 years, if somebody would die around 65, they say, poor guy, he was young. 75, poor guy, he was young. He didn't enjoy his life yet. But by now, when somebody ages 75, 80, wow, this is long. How he lived until age of 75, 80, 85. We hear somebody's age 90, wow, mashallah, what has he done? They were more powerful than them, people before us. And they plowed the earth and developed it more than they have developed it. Their apostle brought them manifest proofs. So it was not Allah who wronged them, but it was they who used to wrong themselves. Am I immune from it? No. What is it, Sheikh, that we are not immune from it? That's based on the verses of the Holy Quran. It can happen to all of us, unfortunately. The more that I'm preparing the lecture for these nights of Muharram, the heart really, really aches and shivers me that nobody is immune and I can't see the community the way that the majority of the people are living, they think they are completely immune from it. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but wait. Tonight is an introduction to our very, very important topic that touches every and each and every one of our lives. All of us, no one excluded. No one can say I'm out of it. You believe it or not, tomorrow when I mention the topic and we get in depth of it, you will be surprised how many people come to me, adult, they said, alhamdulillah, we are immune from it. I look at them, I want to tell them, where do you have this immunity from? Who gave you a check, a paper saying that Mustafa, you are immune from this happening to you? Quran says it's possible. We need to go back to Quran and understand Allah many times He says, Awalam Yasiru, Awalam Yasiru, Awalam Yasiru. More than 15 to 18 times. Have they not traveled? Have they not traveled? Have they not studied people before them? Have they not taken admonition? Have they not taken lessons? Have they not pondered? Why don't you ponder? Why don't you think? Why don't you take lesson? Quran is again saying again and again and again and again and again. We all say history repeats itself, but in action, I'll do exactly what people did before me, and I want different outcome from people who come after me to say, well, they knew, they said it, history repeats itself, but they did the same thing. Didn't you say history repeats itself? Didn't you read what people happened to them before you? عن علي بن الحسين عليه السلام قال في حديث طويل يقول فيه ألا إن للعبد أربع أعين. إمام علي بن الحسين زين العابدين tells us we have four eyes. عينان يبصر بهما أمر دينه ودنياه. With two eyes he sees the affair of his worldly life. أمر دينه ودنياه. Religious religion and Dunya. وعينان يبصر بهما أمر الأمر آخرته. And with two eyes, he sees the affair of the life after death. What's going to happen? So two eyes for this world and dunya and deen, and two eyes about آخرة. فإذا أراد الله بعبد خيرا. If Allah wants good for someone, what happens to this? فَتَحَ لَهُ عَيْنَيْنَ الَّتَيْنَ فِي قَلْبِهِ فَأَبْصَرَ بِهِمَ الْغَيْبِ فِي أَمْرَ آخرته. Allah will open the two later eyes, the one that is about Akhirah. Everything that he sees, how can I gain more from my Akhirah? 
Because this by 70, 80, 90, I don't think with all the respect, inshallah, Allah gives us long life, we all say, Sadabisal, 120 years, Mio Ishreen Sana, Allah give you 120 years. Let's not, I mean, let's be, let's be honest. I don't think any of us will get with what we're eating and what's happening in this era that we are living. If we get to 90, alhamdulillah, we have to like really, really be like, do something, sacrifice a camel every day, like I got to 90. We won't. But the way some people are living their lives, they're living in a way that there is no akhirah. It's only dunya for them. If Allah doesn't want good for someone, what happens? We have a lot to do with this heart, inshallah, in the coming days. Allah will leave his heart. Allah will not open the eyes that he has in his heart. His insight will be off. He won't see anything about Akhirah. Brother, come and invest on your Akhirah. Habibi, who has time for Akhirah? Let us just hold on to this dunya. I still haven't been able to pay my uh, mortgage yet. You're talking about Akhirah? May Allah bless you. Chapter 40, verse 21. أَوَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْعَرْضِ We read this. فَأَعْتَبِرُوا يَا أُولِ الْأَبْصَارِ Chapter 59, verse 2. So take listen, O oh you who have insight. Imam Hussein brought us here, Alhamdulillah, be grateful to your parents who raised you with the love of Abu Abdullah Hussein, that when the night of Muharram comes, when you hear as the first of Muharram, your heart beats, where is Majlis of Abu Abdullah Hussein for me to attend? Appreciate your mother and your father who raised you with this love. This love, you cannot put dollar sign, dollar value about it. How much this love will take us to heaven, inshallah. Fahtabiru ya ulul Absar, chapter 59, verse 2. So take a listen. Mustafa, you read Quran so many times. Did you take a listen? Why didn't you take a listen? Why didn't you see and you thought of yourself again to be immune from it? Chapter 12, verse 111. Allah, chapter 12, Surah to Yusuf. Allah tells the whole story about Prophet Yusuf. Beautiful story. Then Allah says, in their, in their histories, there is certainly a lesson for men of understanding. This is the way that we need to read Quran, brother, sister, starting today, Muharram, the first of Muharram. What Allah is trying to give me as a lesson. We spend so much time, Alhamdulillah, I've seen some of the families, brother, Shaykh, do you have any class for reading Quran? I want my kids to be learn Quran, Tafsir of Quran, Tajweed, beautiful, good, mashallah. But more than recitation of just reading without understanding, Allah wants us to take a lesson, to take admonition, to use our intellect to wake up to see what happened, why Allah brings the story of Prophet Musa more than any other story. We'll touch on this, inshallah, in the coming nights. We will compare, because we want to see what happened to them are we immune from it or not? So what is it, Shaykh? Wait. Are we immune from it? No. Prophet Musa's story has been mentioned again and again and again in the whole Quran. Why? Because Rasulullah said, everything that happened to the nation of my brother, Musa ala nabina wa alayhi wa alayhi salam, the same thing, copy, paste, exactly the same thing will happen to my nation. And we'll see, we, we see it happen. The history shows us that it did happen again, but we don't. We just read Prophet Musa's story, we move on. A believer, indeed. Imam Ali says, indeed, the believer they look at dunya with the eyes of taking a lesson. How can I learn from everything that is around me? 
how can I learn from whatever something happened next to me? What I can learn from this? What I can learn from this? What I can learn from this? Every minute Allah is trying to show us sign after sign after sign. Wake up! I'm in a deep, deep, deep sleep. We were driving in 95, my wife and I, we were going south. And then coming north, a traffic, the accident happened and it was vicious. People, and then we saw the trap, we saw the accident and we just started going. And it was really, really like a big accident that we knew that this will block 95 at least six, seven hours. It was vicious. We kept driving. I wish I could have just stopped my car, go across 95, tell people, take the exit. If you continue, there is no more exit. You will get stuck in this traffic and it's going to take another five, six hours because at, at least at least nine to ten cars, one after one after one, it was smashed one after one after one. So while I'm driving, I cannot pause in the middle of 95, just go across the street and everybody's like, okay, what is And I was wearing Amari. Like, what is the sheikh is trying to do? Blow himself in the middle of 95 or something? Right away, I said to my wife, what can we learn from this right now? We are coming from a place that we saw something happened. We're trying to awaken people to take exit, to not continue, but probably no one will listen to us. How can we wake them up? There's no possible, there's nothing we can do. No matter how much I scream, nobody will listen to me. Well, Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the whole Quran screaming, فَاعْتَبِرُوا Take lesson, wake up. Dunya. We'll talk about it. We have a lot to do with this dunya. We see dunya. Wow. We see something from this worldly affairs, worldly life. We really get melted. Each and every one of us to our own age, to our own level of knowledge. A mu'min, a believer. Am I a believer? Imam is giving us characteristics of a believer. Everything that he sees in dunya, there is a lesson for me to wake up. There is a sign. Somebody's telling me the path that I'm taking with my family, with my wife, with my husband, with my children, as work, as job, as personality, as a demeanor, as my akhlaq. This is wrong. I don't think so. The next hadith is a little bit difficult. It's kind of painful. And I can see how how much pain was in the heart of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam saying this hadith. Because again, he is seeing what is happening. He wants his Shia, his believers, his followers to wake up, but they don't. Imam says, وقال عليه السلام ما أكثر أكثر العبر وأقل الاعتبار There is so many lessons to be taken, but those who will take lessons are very few. We say history repeats itself. 11 times it happened to us. One of our youth last week, beautiful question, youth session, Friday night, asked me, well, why are we being punished not having our imam amongst us for what people did prior to us? During this past 1400, almost 1,180 year old, imam, 84 year old, we don't have any imam amongst us. Well, why are we being punished for those people who did what they did with the Imam, with Imam Ali alayhi salam, with Imam Hassan alayhi salam, with Imam Hussein alayhi salam, with Imam Sajjad and all the Imams. Why don't we have our Imam next to us? They did something wrong. We haven't done anything wrong. We will see. The same trend, the same characteristics, the same causes, the same motives that those people had, and they left their 11 Imams, copy paste the same thing we have it today also. Am I immune from it? No. Quran says you're not immune from it. 
Again, I will repeat this. I said it a couple of minutes ago. People coming, the adult, they say, Alhamdulillah, Sheikh, we are immune from it. Let's talk to the youth. We don't need to know about this. Alhamdulillah, we got to know about it. I look at them and say, May Allah guide me, then guide me, then guide me, inshallah. Another hadith, Amir al-Mu'minna Ali ibn Abi Talib Again, it's all the reason why we need an introduction before our lecture, because we have to look at the lecture, listen to the lecture starting tomorrow. Not my word, the word of words of Quran and Ahl Bayt alayhim salam to see, to take admonition, to take lesson. Imam Hussein brought us here for a reason. Sabab, definitely. But a person who takes admonition, takes lesson, learn something. It's a whole another level. قال عليه السلام رحم الله امرأ تفكر فاعتبر واعتبر فأبصر. May Allah's mercy be upon an individual who thinks. And with his thinking, he takes lessons. And with his taking lesson, he, his insight is flourished. His basira is not that much about basar, it's mostly about basira. And actually, it's all about basira. Not about basar, about basira, insights. People on the day of Ashura, they saw Imam Hussein. They heard Imam Hussein. They touched Imam Hussein. But the insight dead. It doesn't take a long time for the insight to go to die. We will see, inshallah, in the coming night. Are we feeding our insight to stay alive? Or are we taking jackhammer and we are destroying insight inch by inch? To have a Look at a father giving an advice to his son. Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib salam giving advice. Tabam Hassan and Mushtaba by their names. Oh, my God. Beautiful. As a parent, let's just go just go to Hafal Aqul, download it, see it. The second chapter after Rasulullah saying is list sayings of Amir al Mu'mineen. Not the first or second sentiment in there. Imam's advising his son, Imam Hassan and Mushtaba. I've taken a segment from this advice. It's not only to Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam. Imam Hassan doesn't need advice. It's for you and I. But as a father, see advice he gives him. I'll read the whole Arabic first, so we can enlighten our gathering with the words of Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam. And then I'll read the translation complete. Ay bunay, inni wa in lam akun umirtu umra man kana qabli, faqad nadartu fi a'malihim. وفكرت في أخبارهم وسرت في آثارهم حتى عدت كأحدهم بل كأني بما أنتهي إلي من أمورهم قد أمرت مع أولهم إلى آخرهم فعرفت صفو ذلك من كدره ونفعه من ضره فاستخلصت لك من كل أمر نخيله وتوخيت لك جميلة. What a beautiful advice. Rather than me not knowing anything from Quran and Hadith, being influenced by my environment, from day one, I want definitely my son to be engineer, architect, doctor, nothing wrong with them. Encouraging them, education, mandatory. For those who have been within my lectures, they know I always push and recommend that any field that you are in as the lover of Ahl Bayt salam, you have to be number one. You have to be number one. Dentist, number one. Architect, number one. Engineer, number one. Whatever you are in, you have to be number one because we follow people who are number one in everything. Money, billionaires. Number one, that's its time. But giving advice to our kids, to that son, I'm reading Quran. Let me sit and give you a bedtime story. 
At the dinner table, let me tell you a story from the lives of the people who were be before us. What they did, these are the things that they did that they were successful, and these are the things that they did which failed them. I want you to wake up, son. Listen to this beautiful line. Oh, my child, even though I have not reached the age which those before me had, yet I looked into their behavior and thought over events of their lives. I didn't live it, but I looked. I looked, I know, inside. I walk past by something not carelessly. Second action plan. From tonight, I will see everything that I see everywhere with an eye that this thing is about to teach me something. That this person is about to teach me something. This incident, this event, this accident, this coincidence, everything around me is trying to teach me a lesson. If I want to learn a lesson, if not, I will just pass by it. I didn't see anything. Unfortunately, dunya and the system of this dunya, I'll come back to this hadith. Typically, and I'm unfortunately, with all the respect, I'm not gonna generalize the statement. Typically, kids raised in the West, typically, not a general statement, always exceptions. I might be wrong. You can argue. They only think what have they been told. This is it, nothing else. For example, typically, you send someone who's been raised here, go and in the closet, second shelf, there is something, bring it. They go, they just see second shelf. Us parents, probably, you will know what I'm talking about. They go, they come back, it's not there. You're like, it's there. I didn't see it on the second shelf. Well, look a little bit right, a little bit left, a little bit down, bottom, a little bit up. Just look, it's there. It just happened to us yesterday. Oh, it was here. What is it showing you? This is the only thing they want you to see. Social media, new trends, YouTube shorts, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Reels, all every couple of hours, every every couple of days, there is a trend coming. Everywhere you see, you see the same thing. My kids see it, my wife sees it, I see it, it's the same thing. This is what they want you to see. Out, nothing. there's nothing out there. This is it. We need to be focused, no doubt. But we have to see what is happening around us. Oh, this happened, this happened. Uh, uh, lost. In university, third year in university, what is your major? Undecided, undeclared. You've been studying three years, you don't know what you want to do? Well, I don't know, maybe this, maybe that, maybe here. I, I don't know, my parents say this. I, don't, I like this, maybe this makes more money. Uh, third year college. Be careful, parents, yourself, and the trend that you're leaving for your kids behind. I'll read again. Oh, my child, even though I have not reached the age which those before me had, yet I looked into their behavior and thought over events of their lives. I don't want to go far. Forget about far. I saw my neighbor, they make the same mistake. They did a mistake. I don't take a lesson from it. I want to do the same mistake. Forget about, about the neighbor. I did one mistake. I am so much trapped into this life cycle. Next day I make the same mistake again. Next day the same mistake again. Next week the same mistake again. Next month the same mistake again. Why? Why? Because I'm just being occupied. I'm just seeing this is it. Paycheck to paycheck. Bigger house, better, better car. This, this materialistic, it's been 
not only has filled my eyes, my heart has occupied my brain, everything for me is only this. There's nothing else. Akhir, of course, Sheikh is also a being who doesn't believe in Akhir. Amal of it, I'll read again. The words of the Imam needs to be repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated again so it's synchronized with our behavior. Oh, my child. And look at, see? By itself. Ay bunay. Look how beautiful he calls his son. Oh, my child. My dear son. Bunay. Hassan, come here. I want to tell you something. No. Ay bunay. So the parents come. Sheikh, my kids don't respect me. Have you respected me? I told you not to scream. Well, you're screaming right now. What happened? Ay bunay. I have reached, I have not reached the age which those before me had, yet I looked into their behavior and thought over events of their lives. I walked among their ruins till I was as one of them. In fact, by virtue of those of their affairs that have become known to me as, to me, it is as though I have lived with them for, from their first to the last. I have therefore been able to discern the impure from the clean and the benefits from the harm. I have selected for you the choices of those matters and collected for you their good points and have kept away from you their useless points. That I'm going to advise you, that I'm going to teach you something. I have taken the summary of everything that has happened in the past. I summarized it, I summarized it, I summarized it. I took all the dirt away from it. I made it beautiful. I shined it for you. I'm presenting it for you. To do what with it? For you to take lesson and to move forward and to become successful. But if I don't read the teachings of Ahl Bayt I'm not going to get it. Allah sends us Quran and Ahl Bayt alayhim was salam. When Rasulullah says, Inni tarakum fikum at taqlain, kitab Allah wa atrati ahl bayti, ma in tamasaktum bihima, lan tadillu ba'di abada. I'm leaving you two weighty things the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my atra, my family, my ahlul bayt, which according to non Shia website, if anybody wants, they ask, who are Atra of Ahlul Bayt? Who are Ahlul Bayt? The narrator says, the son of Ali. I have it. You can go to sunnah.com and you can see it. Have we listened to Ahlul Bayt? Have we listened to Quran? Have I read Quran and thinking, what made them? Like I take a verse and I read. What happened? We'll talk about it in depth of it tomorrow night and the coming nights. What happened? People just saw the miracle of Prophet Musa. They just saw it. Beautiful miracle. With his staff, he hits the ocean, the river, splits open. Then they said, Prophet Musa, we are 12, 12 tribes. We want 12 paths. Okay, one, two, Three, four, five, six, twelve. Well, Prophet Musa, when we get into this river, we want to see the other tribe also. We want to see them. Okay, I'm going to make the wall between you and them see through so you can see one another. There are windows. You can see. Salam alaikum. What's happening? You guys are good. They get on the other side. Are you with me? Yes. Thank you. Are you with me? Yes. yes. They get on the other side. Prophet Musa says, I am leaving Harun with you, my brother. He will be my Khalifa. 30 days, Allah has asked me to come. I'll go and I'll come back. Okay, go. Ciao. We're sitting here waiting. Go do what you're going to do. We're waiting for you. Don't do anything wrong. Don't touch the gas. Don't open the door for the wolf. Don't do anything. We will be here. 30 days, one month. Okay, just go and come back. We're sitting here. Sitting tight. 31st day, Musa is not coming back. 
What is our God? Okay, uh, somebody says, He is your God. As soon as they got on the other side, they saw on the other side of the river that they are worshiping cows and idols. They said, can you have, can you make one of this for us, please? We need one like this. I read this verse of the Holy Quran and I read Hadith of Rasulullah that everything that happened to my, to, to Prophet Moses' nation will happen to me. Okay, just move on. Okay, next. Next verse, move on. Alhamdulillah, I read Quran. Okay, move on. What's what's the business today? Allah says, فَاعْتَبِرُوا Take admonition. We owe it to ourselves, brothers and sisters. I will go back to the statement that I started the lecture with. Are we immune from it? We're not. Nobody's immune. I wish I can find one verse in the Holy Quran, or one hadith that says you are immune from it. We're not. And it's happening to us every day. And we will be tested, and unfortunately the test many people will fail. Why? Because history repeats itself. Why? Because after Rasulullah's departure, only few people came and they were with Amir al muminin Why? Because only 72 to 74 to 84, maximum 100 people were with Imam, with Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Why? Same thing happened to every Imam. Are we immune from it? We're not. I will repeat this if I have to 100 times. The time. So, so we really, really grasp and we really let this to sink in. We are not immune from it, brothers and sisters. We're not. I don't know how much I need to emphasize on this. Majalis of Allah Abdullah Hussein brings us back to awaken us. To know that we are not immune from it. Do what? Vaccination? What is the vaccination? Inshallah in the coming months. The first person to do Masa'ib of Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam and to read Musiba of Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam is Allah. Allah reading the Musiba to Jibra'il, Jibra'il reading to Musiba to Prophet Adam ala Nabina wa Ali wa alayhi salam. How? Beautiful. Within this beautiful hadith that في تفسير قوله فتلقى آدم من ربه كلمات After Prophet Adam did what he did Allah taught him some words to Jibra'il or Jibra'il Go tell him these names, these kalamat He asked Allah's forgiveness by these kalamat I will forgive him Say it Jibra'il Jibra'il tells him, Adam, say this name. قُلْ يَا حَمِيدُ بِحَقِّ مُحَمَّدِ يَا عَالِي بِحَقِّ عَلِي يَا فَاطِرُ بِحَقِّ فَاطِرَ يَا مُحْسِنُ بِحَقِّ الْحَسَنِ وَالْحُسَيْنِ مِنْكَ الْإِحْسَانِ فَلَمَّا ذَكَرَ الْحُسَيْنِ سَالَ الدُّمُوعِ when Prophet Adam started, when he said Hussein, he started crying. When his heart broke. وَقَالَ يَا أَخِي جِبْرَئِيلِ فِي ذِكْرِ الْخَامِسِ يَنْكَسْرُ قَلْبِي وَجِبْرَئِيلِ كَجَنَبُ What happens when I read, when I mention the last one, Hussein, my heart breaks. Didn't happen with the first, or the second, or the third, or the fourth. قال يا أخي جبرائيل في ذكر الخامس ينكسر قلبي كان شنو في الناس وتسيل عبرتي I start shedding tears قال جبرائيل ولدك هذا يصاب بمصيبة تصغر تصغر عندها المصائب أو آدم this is one of your son حسين a tragedy will happen to him that all the tragedies of the world will be little compared to what happens to him on the day of Ashura. 
فقال يا اخي وما هي؟ قال يقتل عطشانا قريبا وحيدا. او ادم this son of yours will be killed. يقتل عطشانا he will be killed while he is thirsty. And he is غريب he has no one to help him. وحيدا stranger فريدا ليس له ناصر. He has no one to aid him. Completely alone and stranger. No one is there to aid him. Oh Adam, if you see him, he says, I'm thirsty. If there's anyone that can give me some cup of water. He will say, There is no one to aid me. Thirst is so much overcomes him that he starts seeing smoke in the air, even though there is no smoke. He starts seeing smoke because of he's really, really thirsty. Nobody answers him except with swords. That's the first musibah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reading to Prophet Adam through Jibreel. That's the first. Allah, Jibreel, Prophet Adam sitting in the majlis, the first majlis for Abba Abdullah al Hussein, Adam ala Nabina wa Ali alayhi salam. He is the attendees of this majlis. The next, in the next majlis. Anbiya prophets, one after one after one, Prophet Ibrahim passes through the land of Karbala. He, he gets injury. Some drops of blood come out of his body on the ground. He says, oh Allah, have I done something? He says, no, you haven't done anything. Nothing wrong. Here is Karbala. Here is the son of the grand Rasulullah who will be killed. His blood will be shed on this plain. I want your blood also to be shed on this plain. Every prophet that goes through Karbala, something happened to him. Another musibah, another majlis. Where is another majlis? Before the event of Ashura, Rawa annahu lamma akhbar al-Nabi ibnatahu Fatima. Rasulullah one day comes to Fatima to Zahra, sallallahu alayhi Oh my daughter, بِقَتْلِ وَلَدِهَا الْحُسَيْنِ Your son Hussein will be killed. وَمَا يَجْرِي عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الْمِحَانِ Rasulullah telling every little detail of what will happen to Imam Hussein alayhi salam on the day of Ashura. بكت فاطمة بكاء شديدة. فاطمة الزهراء start shedding tears normally no viciously she start she start crying and shedding tears on what will happen to her son. وقالت يا أبا متى يكون ذلك؟ When this will happen؟ قال في زمان خالي منا ومنك ومن علي. I won't be there. You won't be there. Ali his father won't be there. She keeps crying and she increases in her crying. What would happen to her? Is there anyone that will come and will shed tears for my son Hussein? Will there be a gathering and majlis people come together and shed tears? فقال النبي يا فاطمة إن نساء أمتي يبكون على نساء أهل بيتي ورجالهم يبكون على رجال أهل بيتي ويجددون العزاء جيلا بعد جيل الحمد لله رسول الله says there will come a time that men of my nation will come together they will cry for men of أهل بيت عليهم السلام and what happened to them their women will cry for Lady Zainab سلام الله عليها they will cry we are pledging allegiance to you. We came again. This year we came and as we say, ya Zahra ma ninsa Husayna. By God, O Lady Fatima, we will never forget Abu Abdullah and Hussein. Every year we will come and we will commemorate the martyrdom of your son Hussein. Like tomorrow, Abu Abdullah al Hussein gets to Karbala. The second day of Muharram, Abu Abdullah gets into this to Karbala. When he gets to Karbala, and then his horse doesn't 
walk anymore, doesn't take in even one step. He asked question about this land. What is the name of this land? Different names are given. Then they told him, he asked, Adi Karbala. Is this the land of Karbala? They said, yes, فَقَالُوا نَعَمْ يَبْنِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ فَقَالَ هَذَا مَوْضِعُ كَرْبٍ وَبَلَا This is the place that tragedies will befall us, Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as-salam. هَاقُنَا مَنَاخُ رِكَابِنَا This is where our bloods will be shed. This is where we have to settle down. وَمَحَطُ رِحَالِنَا وَمَقْتَلُ رِجَالَنَا وَمَسْفَكُ دِمَاعَنَا This is where our bloods will shed. This is where Ruqayya Sallallahu Alaihi will become an orphan. This is the place that Ali Al-Azhar will be his last minute seeing his father all thirsty, smiling to the face of his father. And he will be shot an arrow to his neck. This is the place that the daughters of Rasulullah, while they are running between tents, they will snatch earrings from their ears. Brothers and sisters, let us raise our hands. Our beloved Imam Muhammad Mahdi Ajilullah Ta'ala Tarajul Sharif have said, any time that you remember the Masa'ib of my dad, my, my grandfather, any time that you remember the tragedy of my grandfather, that is the time of istijabat al-du'a, shedding tears for Aba Abdullah. That is the time of istijabat al-du'a, and the most important du'a, the only du'a that inshallah in these nights we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to haste and reappearance of our beloved Imam Amal Mahdi Adilullah ta'ala Farija Sharif. So all of us together, raise your hand with your broken heart, with your tears on your face, asking Allah, by the Gurb of ladies, the Gurb of ladies, Zainab Sallallahu Alaihi Allahumma Ajjal Waliyik Al Faraj. 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 Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. اللهم كل وليك حجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل الساعة نعم البرادر سيستر وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا 